Hey everybody, welcome back. We are on Unit 4 the financial sector. We are focused on banking and the expansion of the money supply. This is Subunit 4.4. This is Part 2. Here in Part 2, we're really going to get to see how the money supply really does expand via the banking system. We're going to see the pivotal role the banking system plays in getting that money supply to expand. Now again, this is Part 2, so let me recap Part 1 really quickly. In part one, we had Joe uh, Public. He had $1,000 of currency in circulation in his hands, and he made a deposit, okay? When that currency in circulation went into bank one, it ceased being money and became reserves, okay? So that was pieces of paper. That currency ceased being money. It was no longer in circulation now. It is now reserves. And Joe, of course, got his checking account, his demand deposit, credited $1,000. Key takeaway, the deposit did not change the money supply. It did not change the money supply. You see, Joe, he could buy $1,000 of goods and services before he made the deposit. After he made the deposit, he can still buy $1,000 of goods and services. And of course, the bank cannot buy any goods and services with his deposit. So the money supply did not change. But what did change? Reserves at bank one. Bank One got reserves, and they can lend out a fraction of those reserves. How big of a fraction? Well, that's dependent upon the required reserve ratio, which is 10%. This required reserve ratio is set by the Fed, okay? The Fed has regulatory authority over the banks, and one of the ways it regulates the banks is it says, hey, banks, Bank One and all other banks, you can only lend out 90% of your deposits. In other words, now I'm pointing at 10%, I said 90%. In other words, the required reserve ratio is saying of that deposit banks, you must hold on to 10% in reserves. You can only lend out 90%. I hope that made that's clear. Required reserve ratio is the Fed saying you bank must hold on to 10% of your demand deposits as reserves. You can only lend out 90%. Well, what is 90% of 1,000? It is $900, and that's what we had Bank One do. They made a loan to this guy, Ed. Sorry to put the name Ed right there. They made a loan to Ed for $900, and Ed saw his checking account get credited by $900 when he took out that loan, and that loan expanded the money supply. That's right, guys. Loans create money. When Ed got that loan, he can now go buy $900 of goods and services. And guess what? Joe can still buy a 1,000 of goods and services. So the money supply in this particular problem, starting at 1,000, is now 1,900. The money supply expanded, and it expanded via the loan that Bank One made. Now we want to see how this expansion process can continue to unfold, okay? How we can, we can see the multiplication to continue to happen. So what's going to happen is we're going to have Ed walk out of bank one and go buy a good or service, which makes total sense, right? The only reason you take out a loan is to buy a good or service, so this is going to happen. Ed walks out, he goes and sees Mary, Mary sells TVs, so he buys a TV from Mary and he gives Mary a check. And we're going to have Mary take that check and go deposit it at bank two, okay? So she banks at bank two. So Mary takes that check to bank two, and here's what's gonna happen. Bank two is going to get their, see their reserves go up by $900, and that'll make more sense in just a few minutes here. And Mary is gonna get her checking account, i.e. Her, e. her demand deposits, okay? Demand deposit Mary credited $900. Now, we're not done really with this deposit. You see that check goes into bank two, but it still needs to be cleared. So here's what's going to happen. That check that got deposited in bank two is now going to be sent to the Fed. That's right. They're not just a regulatory authority. They also clear checks, all right? So the Fed is going to clear the check. They're going to get this check and say, oh, a depositor, Ed, from bank one, wrote a check to a depositor at bank two. The Fed is going to say, I need to move reserves from bank one over to bank two. Now, what do I mean by that? Banks keep the majority of their reserves at the Fed. It's important to think of it that way, that the majority of bank reserves are being kept at the Fed. And so when this check comes to the Fed, the Fed is saying, oh, okay, I need to deduct my reserve at bank one by 900 and move those over to bank two. 
And we're still not done because then the Fed is going to take that check, they're going to get their books right, and they're going to send it to Bank One and say, hey, Bank One, you got to get your books right now, okay? And so Bank One goes, oh, all right, Ed wrote a check, oh, to Mary who banks at Bank Two, fine, here's what I need to do. I don't have a thousand in reserves anymore. I only have 100 in reserves. But that's okay, because 100 is 10% of 1,000. They've got what they need in reserves, all right? They're also, they're not done yet. They're also going to say, hey, Ed, you don't have $900 in your checking account anymore. You spent all that money. That's zero. And we get to note a very important thing. Bank One's balance sheet is still balanced. Liabilities, 1,000 in total. Assets, 1,000 in total. Still balanced. And that is the end of that check clearing process, okay? Remember, the $900 of reserves from Bank One moved over here to Bank Two. So, did that create any money? No, the deposit of Mary did not create any money. And that's always key, right? Deposits don't create money. However, Bank Two's got $900 in their demand deposits from Mary and $900 in reserves. Do they have to hold on to that whole $900? No, they only need to hold on to 10% of it. They can lend out 90% of it, right? So they only need to hold on to $90 of that 900. They can make a loan for 810. So guess what? Bob walks into bank two, and Bob takes out a loan, Bob, for plus 810. And when he takes out that loan, his checking account is going to get credited. Demand deposit, Bob, 810. Okay, of course, right? He goes in to get a loan, he's going to get access to money. That's what happens when you get a loan. You get access to money. And guess what? That loan, just like this loan, expanded the money supply. Before this loan, how much could be bought in goods and services? Mary could buy 900, Joe could buy 1,000. After this loan, how much can be bought in goods and services? Bob can now buy 810, Mary can still buy 900, Joe can still buy 1000. The money supply is beginning to expand. And guess what? It's gonna to continue to do so. Why? Because Bob's gonna walk out of this bank, he's gonna spend that money, whoever he gives the money to is gonna make a deposit, and that deposit is going to create some reserves in that, ne in that, in that next transaction, and a fraction of those reserves, 90% of the deposit, 90% of the deposit can be lent out. And so we'll see more and more loans. Take a look at this. 1,000, what's 90% of that? 900, okay, which you also see here, but it was Ed originally. What is 90% of 900? 810. What do you think the next loan is going to be? 729. And the next loan after that, 656. We're going to see this multiplication process, okay? That's right. We're going to get a money multiplier. That money multiplier is going to show us how much the money supply can expand through bank lending. Again, bank lending is the key to money expansion. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.